Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a web controlled device, sometimes called an IoT device. We're going to be making an application that runs on your cell phone or in a web browser that talks to a server which relays messages to this microcontroller which turns on an LED. So for the application, we're going to be using Node.js with the React Native framework with Expo. So you're going to need all that installed. I write all my software in Linux. I recommend you do the same. You can do all this in Windows, I'm sure, but that's not how I'm going to be doing it. For the server, you can run all this on your home network. However, you won't be able to talk to that network once you're off of your Wi-Fi. So what I would recommend is getting some server space from DigitalOcean or something similar. You'll get a static IP that you can communicate with anywhere. And for your microcontroller, this is a Node MCU. It's Arduino based. It has the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, which is very common. I recommend using this because it's very cheap. It's very popular. It's three of these for like 15 bucks or less. So let's just get right into it. Everything I'm going to show you is very easy. The biggest problem is going to be setting up your software. So I will answer most any question you post, but most of your problems are going to be probably outside of the scope of this video. Let's start with the server first. I am SSH'd into my DigitalOcean server. We're using the MQTT protocol. It's the simplest protocol really to communicate with because all it does is relay messages between different clients connected to the server. First thing we're going to do is install Mosquito. Next, we're going to secure the server by adding a user and password. Edit the Mosquito configuration files to tell Mosquito to listen for TCP and WebSockets connections. The Arduino was going to connect over TCP and your web browser and cell phone would connect over WebSockets. Restart Mosquito. Make sure to tell your firewall to allow connections from TCP and WebSockets. Here's the microcontroller we're using. You can see currently it's $15 for three of them on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. Once you have the Arduino IDE installed. The first thing you need to do is add support for this Node MCU board. So go to the board manager. Make sure you select the Node MCU board. Let's uh, run this code first to make sure Wi-Fi is working.
Once that's working, uh, install the MQTT library. Go to Manage Libraries and search for PubSub Client. Make sure you install the library by Nick O'Leary. There's a bunch of other ones. I'm sure they work, but this is the one I use. Now that Wi-Fi is working, uh, let's test the MQTT server. When you're doing this, make sure the IP address, username, and password are all yours. Next, let's add the code for the LED. This LED is built into this Node MCU board. It's a uh, low enabled. So if you see a zero for on, that's normal. Once you have this done, you're going to need the control program to test the last part. So I recommend reading the introduction tutorials to React Native and Expo. It's uh, not very intuitive, in my opinion. Once you have everything working, you have Node.js running, you have Expo, you have uh, some understanding of React Native, let's make our app using the expo init command. And install the React Native MQTT library. So edit the app.js file. I use Visual Studio Code, but any editor will work. This use state library handles the state of the program. So when certain variables change, that will alter the state of our program. For example, when the LED is enable variable changes, that'll enable or disable the LED power button. You might have issues with this async storage, depending on if you're running this program in a web browser or on your phone. So you might want to use this other async storage that is uh, in red text here. So these constants are for MQTT. And now we'll add these functions. Use effect is called when the program loads on message. Arrived is used when MQTT receives a message. This on LED one connect function is used to make sure the node MCU is online. So again, with this MQTT connection code, make sure this is your information. So the rest of this code controls how the program looks. A lot of this is just formatting. I, I use touchable opacities instead of buttons.
I accidentally imported React twice. Start expo with the npm start command. So make sure you have the Expo app on your phone. And once you have Expo running on your computer, you can just scan this QR code to run the program on your phone. cool thing about Expo is it's easy to get the program running on your phone, but when you make changes to your program, the, the program will automatically reload on your phone. that's kind of it. Pretty simple stuff. Like I said, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. The reason I made this video is not because I'm especially interested in IoT or writing software, but because I want to make some more useful hardware in the future that uses this framework as a control scheme. So I'm going to be making a LED light that you can enable motion sensing, light sensing, turn on timers, things like this. And rather than putting all this back end stuff in that video, I'm going to break it up into two. So if this is interesting, stick around for some of my next videos. I'm going to be showing you some pretty cool stuff in the not too distant future. Thanks for watching.